start your gem sim, guys, you need to cut yourself a ring of this PVC pipe. Very, very thick PVC pipe, very solid, uh, can take a lot of beating. The ring we have to cut is an inch and a half wide. So we're going to use a striking gauge here. We're going to set it for an inch and a half. There are markings on the striking gauge, but take a ruler and double check that it is right. Inch and a half. Don't go smaller than an inch and a half. If you're a little bit bigger, okay, don't go smaller. You take that striking gauge, rubbing the block against the edge of the pipe. Use the point to scratch a line all the way around. Make sure you scratch a nice deep line so you can see it. And don't rock. Don't rock at all. If you rock it, the point will come closer to the edge than you want, and you'll have a section that is not three quarter or er, inch and a half. Ooh, nice sound, eh? All the way around. Now that we have a nice line all the way around, and I drew it on there to sharpie so the camera can pick it up a bit better, and I can see it a bit better that way too. Eye protection on. We're going to take a drill here with a uh, something under a 3 uh, eighths drill bit. Uh, it doesn't have to be too big. We just need to drill a hole big enough that the jigsaw blade can fit into. Go right on our line. As we drill this hole, uh, it, it will leave a bit of a divot in our ring, but the divot's not big enough to really mess up our, our gem sieve at all. Eye protection on. Make sure your hand's not underneath it. And drill through. You can rock back and forth a little bit if you need to to make it just a bit wider for the uh, jigsaw blades to get in. That is really hard on a drill bit to do that in metal or something solid, but because the plastic is so soft, we can do it and get away with it. Jigsaw, the blade down through that hole. Following the blade right on our line, and make sure you stay on your line to stay straight, we're going to start cutting around. Now, really remember that that blade sticks out inside this pipe, so you do not want to grab this pipe and hold it with your fingers inside. Make sure the whole time your hand is on the surface and not inside, otherwise you will cut your fingers. Eye protection on again, right on that line. The next step is to take this ring and cut it all the way around one more time so we can split it into two. Wouldn't it have made more sense to cut two thin ones then? 
No. The reason we didn't cut two thin ones and then go on is because every person that cut one of these, their line went a little more crooked and a little more crooked and a little more crooked. And if we had cut double that number, the line would be so crooked by the last person, it wouldn't even be close to working for us. So because we were cutting bigger ones, we kept it fairly straight all the way. It went a bit crooked, but now we can actually draw a line around here a different way and make a perfectly straight cut. The way we're going to draw the line is I've made this little jig, just a block of wood with a sharpie attached to it. Gentlemen? Why'd you put a blue one in that blue? I know, blue on blue was not very smart, but it actually shows up nicely. Take the block of wood, put it against the desk. Take your ring here, and we're going to spin all the way around. That's like three quarters. Good observation there. It is not centered, and it's not supposed to be centered. We're cutting it into basically thirds, one third we're cutting off, two thirds we're leaving. And that's because we're going to be drilling screws into this later on, and we actually need a bit of meat on the bottom for the screws to grab onto. So we're just taking a third off the top right now. Same as before, we're cutting it with a jigsaw, so we have to put a hole into it to start the jigsaw blade. Watch your fingers, eye protection on. When you drill a hole to put the jigsaw blade in, make sure it's not right at the same notch that that first hole was at. If you lined up those notches, you would create a really, really thin spot. A really, really thin spot that uh, could break this. So just make sure it's not at the same point. Again, we probably have to rock back and forth. To make a big enough slot for that blade to get down in. Now that it's so small, we can't just let the table support it as we cut it. It would be too wobbly, too much of a chance of your hands getting inside of this. So instead of that, we're going to use a vise. Around here. A vise to hold it while we cut. Again, don't put your hand inside. Just keep your hand on the surface. Follow that line very carefully on this. The way we drew that line, it's perfectly flat and straight now. And we have to make sure that this cut is perfectly flat and straight, even if your outer ring is a bit bent. This one is the one that's going to keep the screen perfectly level and tight, so it has to be straight. Rotate it every once in a while in the vise. So you can keep a comfortable spot for cutting. Getting off my line here, gotta get back on. Keep it as straight as possible. All the way around. Okay? Okay. Go for it. Come on over, guys. Come on over, not that close, not that close. Okay, your rings have now been split in two. No. <laughs> well, hopefully they have. Once they have been split in two, you guys can, uh, first step here is to align them perfectly. Make sure that they're not rotated around, that they're exactly how they were when you cut them. Easiest way is to line up your hole, where the hole is, and make sure that it is perfect all the way around. We're gonna use a bit of tape here. Thank you for the tape. To hold it in position. Maybe three different spots, just so it's not going to rotate on us. Now, for laying out the holes, you want to lay them out on the thin side. Pick any random spot. That's where the first hole is going to go. We have to have eight holes relatively evenly spaced all around. If you want to get serious about that, you can figure it out by measuring or using squares or something. But it's not too critical if they're exact. So do your best just to align it. We need one there, one exactly opposite. That looks good. We're going to go halfway between the two of those. Halfway between the two of those. And then halfway between each and every one of those marks there. Right on my tape, look at that. 
If you don't trust yourself of just sort of guessing and getting them fairly evenly spaced, we can show you some tricks for measuring those out. But do your best. Do your best to try to get them evenly spaced. Can you grab me some eye protection? I forgot to grab some. At each of those spots, we're going to drill a 1 8 inch hole straight down in. You could go all the way through, it wouldn't matter. It has to go most of the way through. Now because our 1 8 drill bits only have short flutes, it means we have to drill a little bit, pull out to clear the bit, the chips, drill a bit farther, pull out to clear the chips, and then down in. Okay, that's good. Move on to the next one. Get those bits off there. If it goes out the bottom, it's not a big deal. It just has to be deep enough that it goes into the bottom piece. I won't make you guys watch me do all of them, but you get the idea all the way around. Once you've got them all drilled in, we're going to take a countersink bit and we're going to countersink each of the holes. So, thanks. So that when uh, we put the screws in, the heads don't stick up, they sink down and are flush here. You don't have to go deep, just deep enough that the head of the screw will go under the surface. and so on all the way around. We're good? We can do that? Yep. You're happy? Yep. Go for it. Can everyone see? Yes. Can everyone see? Come on over. The next step, you've got your holes drilled, you've got your pieces cut, you got a uh, countersunk, everything. The next step is to get the piece of screen cut that's going to fit yours. We have two different size pipes, so you're going to cut a piece of screen to fit yours. When you cut the screen, leave yourself about an inch all the way around. Leave yourself a little bit extra and cut it off in a corner. Don't take your ring and put it off in the middle of the screen and cut it out of the middle because this stuff's expensive. I had to buy over a hundred dollars worth of screen for this class and if we have people wasting it by cutting out of the middle, it won't cover everyone. I'll have to go buy more. So make sure you do it right on the edge and don't waste any. An inch out, just with scissors you can cut this stuff. It cuts easy. It cuts really easy. The next person will do it right there with one of the small rings, so we'll utilize it all nicely. You've got your screen. We can break this tape off, but keep it, keep your rings aligned because we do need them to go back right in the right spot. Right in the right, right in the right spot. Okay, screen in between the two. Now, this screen stretches. It stretches diagonally. If you pull this diagonally, it stretches. If you pull it straight one way or the other, it does not. We have to have our screen fairly tight in here. So you're going to align it so that the screen is straight across two of the holes. One hole, it goes straight across to the other hole. Not quite, let's rotate it a bit, get this back on. That's where you're gonna start, straight across. At that point, you can take one screw, make sure you're overhanging about an inch on all sides, and not quite. There we go, our holes are lined up nicely. We can take one screw and put it on one side. These screws are an inch and a quarter long. You guys made your blue rings here an inch and a half wide. They should not stick out the far side unless you measured that wrong. Inch and a half should fit in there nicely. Now, after that you're gonna go straight across, straight across to the other side. But before you put the screw in, you're gonna pull the screen. You're gonna pull the screen nice and tight. 
We're not ripping it. We're not going crazy pulling. We're just making sure it's nice and tight by pulling on it. And putting the screen straight across nice and tight. Now this next one is one of the critical ones, guys. The third screw has to go out on one of the edges, right in between those first two. And you do have to pull a little bit, just a little bit. Don't go crazy because you'll actually stretch the whole thing sideways. Just pull a little bit to make it a little bit tight. Going across, that's where you pull nice and tight. Come on over here. We're not ripping it again. We're just pulling nice and tight. And that should give you a fairly good flat surface. When you go and do the diagonal ones, give it a little bit of a pull, but don't go crazy because the screen does stretch diagonally. We don't want to stretch it. Grab that screen, pull a little bit. All the way around. Grab the screen, pull a little bit. Pull a bit. And pull there. And you should end up with a fairly tight screen in there. You can take the scissors now and trim around, leaving about a half inch overhanging all the way around. It doesn't even have to be a fairly exact. Just make sure there's some overhanging because we want to fold it over a little bit when we tape it down. And that'll keep it from pulling in too much. Don't cut right up against the blue. Give yourself a little bit of an overhang. Little bit of an overhang. This will fold over and we're gonna tape this down in place with duct tape. Let's use the open one. So yeah, fold it down. Oops. That was well done, wasn't it? Get nice and centered. And as you're going around, you may even get a friend or someone to help you pull that, pull that in. So it's always laying flat as that tape goes around because you don't want it bulging up underneath there. Someone help me here. Someone use their finger, just push that down as I Off, off center. Let's try this again. You're going to be a permanent resident here. I'm going to tape you in. Okay, okay that's good. That's, get an idea. Tape it down all the way around. I'll show you a little later how we get off the extra tape. There's a little trick for doing that. All right. Go do it. Okay, so once you have the tape around the edge, go with your thumb and push it in really good all the way around so it's sticking really good, really well. Then take a file and just file your, the corner on an angle. What that'll do is it'll cut off the tape. It'll cut off the extra tape. You could just go fold it over, but that doesn't look very good. If you take a file and file the corners, It'll cut the tape nicely, and you'll be able to peel it off so it's a nice, crisp edge. Do that on both sides. Put the big or small too far. It really doesn't matter. Any of them will uh, will cut the tape. Right. Do that on both edges. Make sure that it's cut all the way through before you pull, so you don't actually rip the fibers out of the tape. And then you'll get a very nice crisp edge on that tape. It looks really nice that way. If you just take it and fold it over, it works, but it doesn't look so nice. If you file it like that, you'll get a perfect clean cut all the way around. And once that's done all the way around, your gem sieve is ready to go.
we can play with them next day. We can actually go to find some gems. Yay! Alright? Yep. You're done. Yay. This guy lost the